Hello colorful quilters and welcome back to Color Girl on YouTube. I am so happy to be here today. This project has been one that's been on my list of tutorials to do ever since I started Color Girl on YouTube. So I've been working on a sampler block series on my blog and one of the blocks is a Dresden plate. Now this classic is really fun to make. It's been popular for a long time in quilt making. It's very traditional, but it's also really popular among modern quilters because of all of the ways that you can play with it and create different looks with the fabrics that you use, the shapes, the size, however you want to put these together. Okay, so the pattern is a free PDF download available on my website. I will put the link directly to it in the comments below this video. So go ahead and click through that. It'll take you to colorgirlquilts.com and the link directly for this particular block. Okay, as I mentioned, it's part of a series of sampler blocks that I'm working on. So you'll also find another 29 sampler blocks created by Moda Fabrics that we've been working on. So you go ahead and help yourself to all 30 of the blocks or just the Dresden plate if it's your favorite. Okay, so for today's project, we're gonna make one block like mine. And so you're going to need three fabric colors um, or whatever combination that you want. You can also make it very scrappy. For the pink and the green, if you're making one like mine, you'll need a piece that is five inches by 10 inches. And for the aqua blue, you'll need a piece that is five inches by 20 inches. In addition to that, you'll also need a piece of light fabric or your chosen background large enough to cut a 12 and a half inch square. All right, for sewing supplies, we need the Easy Dresden Ruler, which is sold on colorgirlquilts.com. This is not required. The pattern does include a template for making your Dresden shapes, but I'll tell you why I really like using this ruler and it's definitely one that you'll want to add to your ruler collection if you don't already have one. You'll use it a lot. Um, also some pins and some plain old freezer paper upside down. Freezer paper, um, just available at your local grocery store or Target. Um, if you don't want to use freezer paper for your applique, um, you don't have to. You can also use your own um, preferred stabilizer or none at all. But for the technique I'm going to show you, we are going to applique the Dresden with our sewing machines. Um, it's a top stitch and it is a lot, lot easier with freezer paper or some kind of stabilizer. So I highly recommend that. Okay, so if you have all of your supplies together and you're ready to start sewing, let's do it. Our first step in cutting for the Dresden plate block is our background fabric. And for this one, we are cutting one 12 and a half inch square. And it's never a bad idea to cut these a little on the bigger side and then square them up afterward. Because So I'm going to do that just because sometimes the applique step can gather your fabric a little bit and you don't want it to end up too small after you've done all this work. So I have a slightly large 12 and a half inch square to eventually applique my Dresden plate unit to. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing with my freezer paper or whatever stabilizer you prefer. I just use freezer paper because it's easily available and it's inexpensive. So I'll also cut a 12 and a half inch square from freezer paper. Okay, for the wedge shapes of our Dresden, I am making mine with three colors. I've got a pink, a medium green, and this aqua blue splatter color. 
and for the pink and the green I need five wedge shapes each so I'll cut those pieces into rectangles that are five inches by ten inches but from this aqua blue I actually need ten wedge shapes so I'm going to cut a piece that's five inches by twenty inches so I think the easiest way to do that is just to take this full width of fabric piece that I have and I'm going to fold half of it and cut a five inch by half width of fabric so this will end up being around five inches by like 21 or so I, I think and then place that on my cutting board and arrange my ruler. So the Dre Easy Dresden ruler is great because you can cut all of the sizes from one inch up to eight inches, all these little tumbler shapes or Dresden wedges. So for this project, we are using the five inch line. So I am going to place the five inch line on one edge of my fabric and the edge of the ruler on the other edge and cut both sides for my first one. And then turn the ruler over and cut the second one. And you can continue just rotating your ruler as you move down the length of your strip. Again, for the pink and green, we only need five wedge shapes. For the blue, we need 10. Now, if you're making a scrappier version, you could use smaller pieces of fabric and just cut as many wedges as you can from each scrap, um, even if it's just one or two, or you can cut a full length of width, a full width of fabric strip five inches and cut a whole bunch. You'll probably get about 20 or 21 from each width of fabric strip. So it just depends on the strategy you have for your finished blocks, how many different fabrics you want, if you want them to be scrappy, or if you want them to be all the same fabric or organized the way mine is going to be. This is a good project for layer cake or 10 inch square pre-cut fabrics, because if you cut one 10 inch square in half to get two five inch by 10 inch rectangles, you can cut a total of 10 of these wedges from each 10 inch square. So that's a great way to make a Dresden out of your favorite designer collection if you have a pack of 10 inch squares. Okay, so I need 10 blue ones, I have five green ones, and five pink ones. And we are ready to go to the sewing machine. Okay, so our next step is sewing the little cute points on the ends of each of the wedges for the Dresden plate units. So this looks might seem like it's tricky or that it's some kind of fancy needle turn technique with applique, but it's not. It's super simple. So basically what you're going to do is take your pieces and fold each wedge in half with the right sides facing. And you're working with the long end of your wedge shape. So fold in half, right sides facing, and then go to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch from the end of that raw edge so that you are creating a unit that has like this, this sewn, it's sewn folded in half, okay? So then take your fingers and just gently kind of open up, separate the fabrics and the seam, okay? And kind of finger press those down. You'll create kind of a little, a little triangle at the end, push those down and then turn it right side out and just gently use the point of your scissors to 
push out that point so that you have a little angled edge with finished sides, okay? So from the back side, it looks like this. You'll go to your ironing board next and press these so that you get a really nice crisp edge on your point. Then they will be ready to sew together into the Dresden plate units. Okay, so once you have ironed all of your wedges so that they have these nice little points on the outside, go ahead and arrange your pieces in the order that you want them to be in your finished block. So like I said, I'm doing mine where there's one green and one pink for every two of the blue ones. So it creates this kind of um, this pattern. So I made, again, five of the pink, five of the green, and 10 of the blue. So every other one is blue, and then the green and pink are evenly distributed around the entire circle. Okay, so it starts to make kind of a big circle, but basically you'll just make sure to get these arranged the way that you want them. And again, they can be as scrappy or as organized as you want. Oh, looks like I ended up with an extra blue one, maybe. We'll see once I get them all sewn together. Um, I guess I can't count very well. <laughs> okay, so eat, the next step is to sew them together in pairs. So what I like to do is just have them arranged the way that I want them arranged. Then I'll turn a set right sides facing and line up the ends. So I want the finished edges to be lined up with each other and that's where I'll start sewing. And I'll sew a quarter inch seam to connect them together. And then I'll just continue to work my way around matching each pair of twos together. And then once they're sewn together in pairs, I'll take them to the ironing board and press the seams open. Okay, I am pressing my pairs of wedges. And I wanna remind everybody, if you are using one of these wool pressing mats, make sure that you are um, you having adequate protection um, between the mat and whatever surface you're on. Um, if you are using it on a table like I am, make sure that you have um, a couple of layers or something really nice and thick to insulate and protect your table from the heat or moisture um, from your iron. So the, the wool pressing mats are wonderful. I love mine because it's so portable. I'm actually not working in my sewing room today. I'm at my dining room table and I wanna make sure that that heat doesn't transfer through and um, make a mark on my table. And if I was using steam with my iron, I would definitely wanna make sure that that moisture doesn't affect that. Um, if you have your pressing mat on a cutting board, um, you can warp it. So just, just a, a word to the wise to make sure you're protecting whatever surface you're on when you're pressing. And so just continue to get all of those little two-part units pressed. You'll notice that I have a great little mini iron. This is from Oliso, and I absolutely love it. It is small enough to be very portable, but it still gets really nice and hot so you get great crisp pressing you can see just from what i'm doing here how nicely it's pressing these open seams just really nice and flat and i don't even have it on the highest heat setting right now because it gets really hot 
and it's also really nice and heavy. That's one of the things that I like about it. Um, that even though it's small, it is mighty. So I will put a link in the comments of this video to where you can find the Aliso irons. I definitely recommend them. Okay, so once you have sewn and pressed all of these pairs, all the, the two units, the next thing you'll do is arrange your pieces back into the circle the way that you had it when you started sewing and basically do the entire process again only this time you're going to sew them together to make units of four. Continue to follow these same steps so next you'll have groups of four and then you'll have groups of eight and pretty soon you'll be able to sew the entire ring together so that you have a complete Dresden plate. Okay, so I'm going to get to that point and then I'll show you how to applique it to your background square. Okay, I have finished sewing the entire ring of my Dresden plate wedges and pressed all of the seams open. It looks kind of cool from, from the back and really beautiful from the front. And now you just magically have this finished edge around these points so you're ready to applique it on. Now for this particular one, rather than appliquing a separate circle in the middle of my plate, I am going to turn the inner edges of my wedges under and just have the background fabric show through. So you'll see that I stitched around the inner, inner hole a quarter inch. I just used my regular thread. Ordinarily I would use um, like an invisible thread or monofilament, but I wanted you to be able to see what I did here. So um, it's just a quarter inch all the way around. And what I'm gonna do is take my iron and use that seam as a guide to turn the inside edges of those, those raw edges under toward the back. And you'll notice the stitches will come out a little, they'll separate a little bit, that's fine. But if you use that quarter inch stitching as a guide, then you'll get a nice little turned under edge. And it's a little bit tricky with only a quarter inch. So if you find that you're struggling or you don't mind having a slightly larger opening, you could always sew it three eighths or a half inch to get a little more to work with. And just work your way all the way around that center hole and use a nice hot iron. Steam would probably be great. I did not put water in my iron, but steam would be great to make sure that that lays down really nice and flat, but my iron's hot enough that it's doing a pretty good job. Okay, so go all the way around, getting that edge turned under Okay, the next step is to applique the Dresden plate unit to your background fabric. So I have mine um, with the freezer paper fused to the back and I folded it in quadrants to get four points to line up my plate so that I can see that I have it on here straight. So I'm gonna use these seam lines to line up with the creases where I folded it. As close as I can, just so I can kind of see that I have it kind of straight. And then I'll use a ruler and make sure that I am at least a fourth inch. So I'm about three eighths on that side and about three eighths on that side. 
so I should be about 3 8 inch from all the sides and I think I look like it looks like I'm okay as long as there's at least a quarter inch for sewing it to the blocks next to it um, even if it's a not quite 3 8 or even if it's a little bit more than 3 8 I can always trim it when I square up the block to 12 and a half but I definitely need at least a quarter inch so I have this and then I want to make sure that my center circle looks pretty round and true okay and then I will go ahead and pin it all in place so when I pin the center I want to make sure that I catch that little bit of turned under fabric that I pressed down so that I make sure that I keep that turned under as I'm sewing because that's going to give me a nice finished edge on the inside circle of my block. Okay, so I'll pin this interior edge to get my circle and all the way around periodically to make sure that it's all going to be held in place and then once I'm pinned down I will head to the sewing machine for applique. Okay here is the moment the time to applique our finished Dresden onto the background fabric and create our finished block. So I have my sewing machine threaded with a kind of gray tinged monofilament thread. It's what I had on hand and it's nice because it will blend in with the fabrics and not show very much. You can also use a thread that matches your fabric in a color or you could use something contrasting like black if you want to. I'm going to just top stitch my, my Dresden down, but you could also use a decorative stitch on your machine or a blanket stitch or something like that. So position your, thread, your, your piece, your fabric, so that the needle is going to come down right at the edge of the where the fabric meets the background, okay? So you're just barely, barely catching a tiny bit and I'm gonna do a couple of back stitches make sure that that catches and remove pins as I go I apologize if my hand gets in the way for a minute okay if you have it set your machine to needle down so that you can stop and pivot when you need to but then just very carefully stitch right next to that edge. Try to be as, as even as you can so that you have a nice um, symmetrical seam and it looks neat and tidy all the way around. And just continue until you get back to where you started, removing the pins as you approach them. And the step is going to be the same for the outer edges. You'll just go around each of the points and stitch right along the edges of your Dresden um, all the way around, and then you'll be finished. So I will be back to show you my finished block. Okay, it's all done, and look how beautiful it is. I am so happy with how this turned out and I love this method of machine applique. Using the freezer paper really stabilizes the fabric and allows you to get a nice smooth seam all the way around. So you can see how I top stitched around all of the edges. I used the monofilament thread so it almost disappears and since all of our edges are finished um, we have a really nice clean block that's ready to go into our quilt. So what do you think about this? I would love to see how you imagine your Dresden plates to be. 
I have to say, I've never made one that is this organized in the colors and stuff. I've always done really scrappy ones. So I'm happy with the way the design comes together with the organization of the colors. It's kind of fun. I even think it'd look great in all one color or done like a color wheel with blending and mixing the colors as it goes all the way around in a spectrum. That would be beautiful. So choose your own favorite combination and get making your Dresden plates with this super easy technique. The freezer paper stabilizer really does make the fabric nice and easy to work with so that you can applique these with relative speed and the stabilizing paper prevents the background and the applique fabric from getting bunched under your needle or gathering. So you get a nice flat crisp result. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed sewing with me today. I loved sharing this pattern with you. I, Dresden plates are so cute and so classic. And with the easy Dresden ruler, you can make all different sizes and big ones, fat ones, you know, however you want to do it. So I hope that you'll give it a try and leave a comment. Tell me what you think. If you've tried this technique, how your blocks turned out if you have questions. I would love it if you would subscribe to Color Girl Quilts YouTube and if you are getting ready to start a project, think about shopping with us and help me continue to make videos like this. All right, until next time, see you later.